Hello and welcome to the theory of computation lectures. In the last class, we discussed about Millie and Moore machines. In this class, we'll talk about the equivalence of Millie and Moore machines. So, let's first start with designing a Millie machine. So, we want to design a Millie machine where the input alphabet and the output alphabet are same. Both are 0, 1. And it gives a final output of 1 if and only if the input sequence received so far contains no isolated ones. So let's first try to understand what it means. What do we mean that the input sequence should contain no isolated ones? That means, for example, if you give it an input sequence of 0. So is there any isolated one? Isolated one means a single one with zeros on either side of it. Right now the machine has no isolated ones. It has no ones, so there is no isolated ones. So output must be 1. If we give the input sequence 0, 1 to the machine. Now you see here is a 0. That means so far there is no isolated one. So the machine produces output 1. But moment it receives a 1, that means we have now received a single one. Once we have received an isolated one, then the machine should produce output 0. If you look at this machine, which is receiving an input sequence 0, 1, 1. Now, for this input sequence, when it receives 0, there is no isolated one. So, the machine produces output 1. Moment it receives a 1, as we had seen in the previous case, it will produce an output 0. Then it receives another 1. Then there are no more isolated ones. There are two ones. So, the machine produces output 1 again. Similarly, if the input is 0, 1, 1, 0, the corresponding output will be 1, 0, 1, 1. Right? If the input is 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, the corresponding output will be 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. And if the input is 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, the corresponding output will be 1, 0, 1, 1, double 0. So, let us try to build a machine for transforming input sequences to output sequences such that if the input sequence contains no isolated one, it will uh, produce an output one. And otherwise it will produce output 0. So we start from an initial state A. Now as long as the machine receives 0 in the initial state it will continue to produce output 1 because there are no isolated ones as yet. Moment the machine receives a 1 in state A that means right now it has seen the first one. Now in that case the output should be 0 because now it is containing an isolated one. Now, in state B, if the machine receives a 0, that means after 1, we have received a 0. Moment we have received a 0, that means there is an isolated 1. And if there is an isolated 1, the machine should produce an output 0 and go to state D. Now, think about this. Since we have seen an isolated 1, after this, whatever input comes, does it really matter? Can the machine produce an output 1 for any such sequence? The answer would be no, right? Because we have already seen an out isolated one in the input sequence. And if the input sequence contains an isolated one, the machine cannot produce an output one. So D can be thought of as like a dead state. So in state D, irrespective of whether we receive input 0 or input 1, we will always produce output 0 because the machine can no longer produce an output 1 as the input sequence already contains an isolated one. But in state B, if we receive a 1, that means it's not a sequence of isolated ones. We have received two ones, so it can produce output 1 and go to state C. As long as we receive 1 in state C, we will continue to produce output 1 and remain in state C. We have not seen any isolated ones. But if we receive a 0 in state C, we must go back to state A. We will still continue to produce output 1. For example, in this case, you see, suppose we had received input 0, 1, 1 and then we received another 0. So, up to this, we have not seen any isolated ones, right? 0, 1, 1, 0 does not contain isolated ones. So, we will continue to produce output 1 up to this stage. But we go back to state A because after this, if we see a single one, that means the input sequence now contains an isolated one. For example, in this example, if you see 0, 1, 1, 0 followed by a 1, now this input sequence contains an isolated one. So, we must take the machine to state B and produce output 0. Now, at state B again, so in, in this sequence, if you look at the last sequence, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, up to this, the machine is in state B and it has produces, produced output 0. 
after this it, it if it receives another zero as we had discussed then it always will contain an isolated one and the machine will always start to produce output zero whatever input you give after this so output will always remain zero so i hope you have understood how this milli machine has been designed now let us try to convert this milli machine into a more machine so to do that first we have to create the state transition table this is the state transition table of the milli machine we have already discussed how to write state transition uh, tables for milli machines now let's convert this milli machine that we had designed in the previous step to a more machine so this is the state transition table of the milli machine now to convert it to a corresponding more machine we will first write the state transition table of the corresponding mode machine now let's write the state transition table and this is the state transition table of the corresponding mode machine let's try to understand how we derive this so for example if you have the state transition table of a milli machine you can write the current states the inputs and the next states as it is so whatever was there in this table we have written in this table now only thing that remains is to write the output as it enters a state as you know more machines do not convert input sequences to output sequences it will only produce one if it goes to a final state so let's see how we can figure out when the machine enters state a what output will it produce to understand that look at the next states in this table so here is a case when the machine enters state a it produces output one is there any other place where we find an a in this table answer is no so there is only one place in this case as the machine enters state a it produces output one so we write one here to show that as the machine enters state a it will produce output one okay let's look about state b now in this table once again here as the machine enters state b it produces output zero and there are no other occurrences of b in this table so as the machine enters state b we say that it produces output zero look at c so in this case in the table we have two occurrences of c in both occurrences as the machine enters state c it will produce output one so we say that as the machine enters c it produces output one over here if we find want to find out what will be the output as the machine enters state d find out d over here we have three occurrences of d in all such occurrences as the machine enters state d it produces output zero so for d we write a zero so this is the state transition table of the equivalent mode machine but there is a small problem what is the problem now we know that if the machine enters a state and it produces output one as it enters the state the corresponding state should be treated as a final state in the more machine so in this more machine a and c are the final states and b and d are non-final states so if we draw the corresponding diagram of the more machine so a and c will be depicted as the final state rest of the diagram is same only thing that you should notice is that we have not written the output part for a mood machine because mood machine doesn't have a concept of output so in this mood machine we have a and c as the final states b and d as the non-final states now if a is a final state which is also an initial state will the empty string or the null string be accepted by the machine look at this this is the initial state it is also a final state that means if we do not give any input also the machine is still in a final state that means the null string or the empty string is accepted by the machine i hope this is clear to you okay if there is no input still the machine is in a final state that means the null string or the empty string which is a epsilon is acceptable by the machine now is it possible for a milli machine to accept a null string the concept of null string doesn't appear in case of a milli machine because a milli machine is a device which transforms input sequences to output sequences so if there is no input what will be the output the question is like absurd right it cannot happen so in case of a milli machine there is no concept of null strings whereas in case of a mood machine it may accept a null string but then is this a equivalent mood machine this milli machine doesn't have anything to do with a null string whereas this mood machine is accepting a null string which is not correct right so we have to make sure that the equivalent mood machine does not accept a null string 
So how do we do that? To do that, actually, we want to introduce a new initial state. Let's say that state is A prime. So in our mood machine that we have designed so far, we now introduce a new initial state. We call it A prime. Now, what are the transitions? Since this is a finite state machine, we must make transitions for all the input symbols. So what will be the transition if we give an input 0 to A prime? Now see, if this is an initial state, look at the initial state in the previous case, it was A. So what was the transition? When I gave input 0 to the machine, it remained in state A. So in A prime, if I give input 0, it should go to state A over here. Now in the state A, which was the initial state in the previous machine, if I gave an input 1, it went to state, state B. So in A prime, if I give an input 1, it should go to state B. Now we have a new initial state A prime, which is not a final state and this Moore machine is equivalent to this mill machine. So if you look at the corresponding state transition table, now we have an initial state A prime. In A prime, if we give 0, it goes to state A and in A prime, if I give input 1, it goes to state B. Now since this is a non-final state, the corresponding output is 0. Now other states are same. So in state A, the input 0 produces uh, the output state capital A in input 1 produces the output state capital B and the corresponding output produced by the machine is 1 since A is a final state. Similarly for state C, the corresponding output is 1 as this is also a final state. State B and D are non-final states and hence the output is 0. So I hope we have been able to understand how to convert Milli machines to Moore machines. In the next class, we will discuss one more example of conversion to Milli machines to Moore machines and we will do a problem in which we will see how to achieve this. Thank you.